All right, guys, so welcome back. It's the next morning here. It's just a little before six, and uh, hopefully concrete will be here within a half hour or so. So anyway, um, I'm ready to go. I figured I'd just kind of walk you guys through what's gonna happen. I've got two cameras set up on that skid steer over there. I'm gonna time lapse it, but if obviously, uh, I'm doing this pour by myself, so, so I'm not gonna have a lot of time to talk. So real quick here, before we pour this pad, I, uh, I'll just kind of walk you through. So there's a couple of things here that are kind of true to if you were on that like, commercial job. Uh, you, I, some of you guys will point out chairs, obviously. Um, but you know, this is private, this is me, and I don't wanna buy them. So uh, got the wire down, we're gonna back the truck straight up in here. Oh, I, I know some of you guys are gonna cringe about it too, but I'm also just gonna pour up against the existing metal. It's the only way I can get the, uh, the, uh, the pads to match up, and I wanna pour an approach from one to the other without a dip in it. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with doing that. Once it pads there, it's gonna be separated, and, and I'm good with that. So anyway, so what's gonna happen here is we're gonna back this truck right up into here. We're gonna dump out the concrete, and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna dump it out as level as I can and then I'm gonna kind of uh, use the come along here and I'm gonna work it down real close to level, a little high. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and uh, you guys will see, I'll make what's called a wet screed and I'll use these stakes. These stakes are on grade and I'll come off my form line which is established and I'll make a, a screed line this way and then I'll strike it with that strike board and I'll strike it back this way and I'll go over there do the same thing and I'll just work my way out. And uh, and then once then once the strike's done, then that's that's the hard part basically. Um, then we'll go ahead and we'll float it and then we'll put the machine on it and everything. But that's the stuff that you guys probably will just see in the time lapse is the placing of the concrete and then uh, and then me striking it off. And hopefully once we get that done, then I'll have enough time there to talk to you guys again. But anyway, that's what we've got going. Um, should be a good little pour. Hopefully they'll get here. It's supposed to be 94 degrees today, so hopefully I don't screw myself with that. And then uh, in the front here, you can see I've left out that header. As soon as the first truck comes out, it's gonna be two trucks, then I'll put that header in and, uh, and then we'll pour up to it. So anyway, that's what we got going on, guys. Like I said, there's a few things that are just a little different off of if you were on like, say, a commercial job with I don't know, just a couple of different things. So anyway, uh, no big deal. This will work out just fine. This will be a nice, nice pad here uh, to build on. I think you guys caught that in the time lapse. We backed the truck up here, uh, souped them up real good, dumped it out. I struck it off side to side, did my edges, and I just got done, just got done running the bull float over what I can. So I'm just waiting on the next truck here. Uh, had a little issue. They didn't send me the quite the loads that I wanted to. I wanted two eight-yard trucks. He sent me a seven and a nine, so I'm not quite far enough as I wanted to. So I'm gonna have to pour out pull them forward then put my header in but uh you know we'll get it i'm gonna still be in the shade here for probably another hour and a half two hours so hopefully that'll work with me uh where it won't burn up because it's it's warm already but anyway so far so good i'm at least ahead of it uh you know so so right now i'm, I'm feeling fairly confident uh get her done
guys, so there it is. I got it down. Uh, that was that was the hard part. Boy, it, I was about that did me. That was that was that was a good little piece of concrete to do by yourself. So anyway, that's a that's 24 by 36, and uh, you guys saw I, I got it down, struck it off. And now I've went over it a couple different times here and there with the bull float. And that bull float just kind of seals it up, fills in the voids, uh, kind of preps it for the machine, right? So I'm gonna put a troweling machine on here after a bit and it's gonna slick it up and it's gonna have, make a real kind of a shiny finish. It's kind of called burning concrete in. Uh, there's different stages, you know, you guys have seen like, like a broom finish, which is what it is. You drag like a broom across it, different coarseness and things like that. There's like a swirl finish, which uh, you guys will kind of see as I start to make that first pass with that trowel machine. You'll get this kind of textured swirl. And then after that, then you'll get into basically kind of like a finished floor look. Like uh, if you go into like a, a Walmart or a Menards or something, you know, they'll have that slick burned in concrete. And that's what we're going to on this, uh, this pad here. So yeah, the hard part's over with getting it down. Um, getting it down was the the hard part. Now you can see the sun starting to hit it. So one of the things that's saving me uh, for doing this by myself is the fact that I really don't have to go and worry about the edges too much. You know, a lot of times, you know, you got to run the edges and, you know, like even in this case, if I don't worry about that side, I've still got like 84 feet or 80 feet of edge that I'm not really that concerned with because it's going to have batter boards against it. Um, so I'll just let the machine run off of it and, and we'll be good to go. The uh, one thing I am going to do, I'll show you here, is uh, I'm going to end up putting probably three doorways in this building. So I made myself a little jig here. It goes three quarter to nothing. And I'm going to mark off where my doors are and then get that plane out. And that will drop that slope. That's 10 inches. Uh, and that will kind of drop that slope to that way whenever I put my garage door in there, uh, that water won't want to run in there. It will have to have some resistance to come back up. So. Anyway, it's warm, it's hot, it's like 92 degrees right now. I think it's gonna get up to 95 or 96 today. Good warm day. So, a little pro tip for you guys, uh, working as well as just everything else. Pickle juice, pickle juice. So it's hot, right? You sweating all the time. Uh, I've actually had heat exhaustion twice. Let me tell you, that is not something that you wanna do. They say it screws with you for the rest of your life. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a bad deal. And a lot of it's salt and potassium. You get low anymore. I can feel it coming on the first time it happened to me. I couldn't feel it coming on, but pickle juice. Uh, I, I go through about one of these every other day in the summertime. It may sound nasty, but there's a lot of salt and a lot of potassium in pickle juice. And, uh, you know, I just drink it, drink it like water. And, uh, you know, it really does help. You can feel yourself kind of coming back out of it if you start getting real hot, so. So I'm gonna run this edge real quick, hit them doors. I'm gonna be able to put a machine back there here, here real quick, so. Anyway, stay tuned for that, but uh, yeah. That's a pretty big pour. Do by yourself, so. I'm happy with it. Saved me a ton of money. So just went over the first pass there with the machine. Um, and basically what that is, if you've not seen a trial machine before, basically got like four blades on it and you can control the pitch and then it spins and it just it works no different than if you'd see like the old timers where they they hand trowel it with a slick steel trowel all that is just a powered steel trowel uh, so anyway just went over the first pass there this this pour and I knew this going in but, which there's nothing you can really do about it but it's kind of funky because the trees are behind me so that side caught sun a lot quicker as well as they hung me up on on a truck this morning so I've got a, a pretty good gap there in between pours and uh, you know because I was striking it off myself I didn't want to try to dry it up and make them you know super a uh, little closer consistency I just went ahead and just let it be wet and I'll just deal with it but you can see that line just right there somewhere in there oh you guys can see that line that's kind of right where that first truck is and it's still pretty wet there on the back side. That machine will fall in. So uh, now we'll just keep working it. Uh, this wind's picking up so it's gonna really, 
really pop here quickly. Uh, I'm going to go back through, do an area, kind of hit the edges a little bit, go back through, do an area, and then as this concrete gets harder and harder, I'll actually pitch those blades up more and more and more until they're just contacting on a slight, very slight. Right now I've got them contacting like three quarters of that blade, and it's just a real, you're running it really slow, just kind of filling in any imperfections and just kind of making everything super, super flat. I mean, everything goes off of the strike and then the float and everything else. But uh, as it as it gets harder, you'll pitch those blades up more and you'll speed that machine up. And that's what'll get that, that burned in shiny finish. So anyway, it's just a process now, just staying ahead of it here. Um, and, you know, eventually we'll have a, a decent looking little pour. I got to address my, my edge there. Um, Go back through and keep hitting that. I ain't gonna have to edge that. So just keep bouncing back and forth. And uh, I'm not even in frame. Just keep bouncing back and forth. And eventually, we'll have a good pad. So there she is in all her glory. One 24 by 36 by five and a half inch pad. Um, yeah. So we're not quite done yet. Um, there's still one more thing we have to do, right? So I just sprayed Cure and Seal on it, which uh, Cure and Seal is, it's kind of like a film, right? And it, it just coats the top. And basically what it does is, well, it does two things. It, seals it but it also helps with the cure so you know concrete if it gets air it sometimes especially like in this heat it'll cure too fast and uh, you know sometimes you'll have issues where like the top pops so this just kind of covers it up uh, kind of seals it in and lets that concrete cure uh, you know with inside itself so anyway I just got the cure and seal sprayed on it um, one more thing I have to do is I have to cut uh, control joints in it so what a control joint is so concrete will uh, it will crack regardless. Doesn't matter how much rebar you got, whatever. Uh, concrete will crack and it will find the path of least resistance to crack. It just got to relieve itself. So what we want to do is we want to make relief cuts in this pad so that way we make this concrete crack right where we want it to. So um, here in a little bit here, I'll get the saw and we'll lay it out in kind of a grid pattern and, and we'll cut it in ideally like squares and as that concrete cures next couple of days or whatever, it will crack on those cuts that I made. I'm gonna make a cut about an inch and a half deep or so in this pad, and it'll crack right there, and that'll relieve itself, and then you won't have any issues you know, later down the road. So anyway, I uh, turned out pretty good. Uh, to be quite honest, guys, this is the biggest pad that I've ever poured by myself. Uh, I poured some big pads, but you know, honestly, uh, I, a pad like this, well, it would have a minimum of uh, probably three people on this pad, more than likely four to get it down, uh, you know, sometimes even more, but minimum of three. So anyway, uh, that's kind of, that's not too awful bad to be doing it by myself. It turned out pretty nice. I ended up burning it in pretty good for no other reason than I had to try to get it to match because they... Yeah, that second truck was an hour behind the first, and that was going off a lot quicker than uh, than the first truck. So, or the first truck went off a lot quicker than the second truck. So, I was having to kind of bounce back and forth, and it's just easier, in my opinion, to blend it really burned in and try to kind of feather it. So, anyway, that worked out pretty well. Yeah, pretty happy with it. Uh, you know, if I had to critique myself in one. That edge there has a little to be desired, and honestly, I knew that going into it. I knew I would have to sacrifice something being by myself, and honestly, I'm, I've got ideas. I want to make that whole side a whole long 24-foot rod rack 
vertical rod racks and it's going to be 12 foot tall. Uh, so by the time I fur that out, you'll never see that, that boogered up kind of edge. It's only, it's only like an inch and a half, two inches out. That's why I couldn't get with the machine. So if that's all I got to sacrifice, I'm happy. All right. I'm going to check back with you guys here after a bit. I am going to go inside and get me a beer and a bowl of ice cream because I think I deserve it. I'm going to wait for this cure and seal to dry. Then I'm going to snap out my lines and uh, cut this. We're about to wrap up the day here. Had a good day. Uh, got a lot done. So anyway, if it looks like it's a little darker. It's because it is. Uh, I actually ended up, I decided, well, I'm already, already in the... Already in the concrete pouring mine frame. Let's go ahead and uh, I wanted to put an approach into both buildings there. So I've got that 12 foot door there and then this whole building. Uh, so I ended up forming up a uh, 10 foot wide approach. I still got to do a little, a little rock work and throw the wire in and dowel it yet, but uh, that's no big deal. We can do that. I got concrete coming at seven o'clock tomorrow for that. So we can get that poured and then we can be done. Uh, but anyway, it's time to cut this concrete. So for those of you who not, don't know, this is, this is a soft cut saw. This is what we cut the concrete with. It cuts down a set depth. Um, it's just a little, I don't know if you guys can see the little blade in there, just a little blade. Um, so try it on the, on the concrete and you can cut pretty green concrete with it. So anyway, uh, you guys can see I've got my line snapped out here. Uh, for my for my cut so like normally if you look at in like a spec book they'll say don't exceed more than 10 feet i went 12 um it's more is better but then again i've cut a lot of stuff at 12 foot and i've never really had a problem so anyway uh got it all broke out and it breaks out really nice with this 24 by 36 anyway uh so anyway i'm gonna get that cut there and then it will probably end up cracking tonight uh, and then tomorrow, I'll show you guys right where it cracks. Uh, it would be right on that expansion joint, or control joint. Uh, control joint, rather. So anyway, I'm going to get doing that here. Got a little bit of work before it gets dark, and, uh, and I'll, be, uh, then I'll be ready to go again tomorrow. All right, so it's been a couple of days here. Uh, I actually just got home from work, and uh, we just had a nice little downpour. So I came out to look at the pad. Uh, don't see any lakes out there. Good flat pour, very happy with that. So I'll just kind of wrap up this video here. Uh, you know, it, it uh, turned out good. I'm very happy with it. You know, for pouring it by myself, you guys saw uh, the second driver, he jumped out and uh, helped a little bit, you know, so I can't really take all the credit. But yeah, I mean, I did strike the whole thing off and, and finish it all, so very happy with that. Uh, Anyway, pad looks real good. You guys can see here, uh, you guys can see the approach that I poured the next morning. I didn't film any of it just because I was, I just wanted to get done. <laughs> so anyway, came out 10 foot. This has got a nice uh, exterior broom finish on it. Uh, it turned out real good. Uh, put about, put about a little, little two, two and a half inches of slope on it, you know, get the water drained away. But yeah, nice little approach. So whenever I go to build on it, I'll have something to drive up to and if I want to in the future I can always add on to this approach you don't know, have me a nice uh, nice pad outside so anyway just kind of wanted to wrap up this video the next time you guys will see me uh, I'll probably be framing on top of this on this pad so that'll be exciting that'll be fun but yeah it turned out pretty good guys uh, very happy with how it how it turned out like I said for uh, for pouring by myself, uh, I, I can't really ask for, for much more. So, got a good good finish on it, and uh, looks real nice. So, so anyway guys, uh, I wanna thank you all for sticking along with me here. If you guys uh, enjoyed this video, or even maybe learned something, took something from it, do me a favor, hit that, uh, hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, it really helps these videos out. Uh, as well as leave a comment, I always love, uh, reading you guys' comments. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate the view. Stick with me till next time. And, uh, and we'll be framing on top of this building. Till then, guys, I appreciate it. We'll see you then.